Hey guys, today we're going to build a waterfall chart in ThinkCell. Now a waterfall chart is used to show how an initial value gets to a final value and what the drivers for change were. It looks something like this. And that's the chart we're going to build today. So in this video, we're going to cover how to insert and fill your waterfall chart with data, how to style and format your waterfall chart, how to add stacked columns within a waterfall chart, how to add a reference column to your waterfall chart, and much more. So if that sounds good, let's jump into it. Okay, first thing we'll do is insert the chart. So we click insert, elements, and then in this case, build up waterfall. Drop that in. Now the next thing we need to do is add our data. So in a build up waterfall, positive values will add to the running total and negative values will subtract from the running total. I'll show you how that works by dropping in some example data. Now the last thing we want to do is just sum all of the values to the left of the current column. To do that, we press E, which means equals, and there we're done. So think so is gonna start with 6.54, add 1.14, add 0 0.54, then subtract 0 0.45, 0 0.1, 0 0.56, and give us the final number. I'll show you how that looks. There we go. It's a little tricky to read, so let me quickly format this. So as you can see now, ThinkSell has calculated the FY20 cash earnings to be 7.11. If we were hypothetically to change one of the numbers, so will automatically update the total. So let's change this one to 0 0.24. And 7.11 is now 6.81. So it's automatically calculated. So let me change that back. One other cool thing about ThinkCell is that we can add multiple E's into one chart. I'll show you how that looks. So maybe we want to know what our cash earnings would be pre-expenses in FY20. I'll drop in E. So here you can see in FY20, excluding our expenses, our cash earnings would have been 8.22 million. Now let's format our chart a little bit. So one thing you'll notice is that the first and the last columns are really tall and the intermediate columns are quite small and they can be quite hard to read. So we'll add a break in by right clicking and selecting add break. Now this looks a little bit weird, so we can select the break and drag the top row higher so that our first and last columns are a little bit larger. One thing I like to do with the colors on a waterfall chart is to illustrate increases green and decreases red. That also means I like to change the first and the last columns to a neutral color. Hold control and click on the first and the last column and I'll change that to gray. My first two columns, which are increases, are already green, so I'll leave those, but then I'll hold control again and highlight the last three and change those to red. So now you can see we have two increases and three decreases. You'll also note here that the decreases don't have negative signs or minus signs against them. We can change that. So let's multi-select again. So I'll hold control, click the first label, click the last label, and then from the drop down, I'll select minus. One of the really cool things about ThinkCell's waterfall charts is that you can actually stack columns within the waterfall chart. So what I mean is we can break this 1.14 down into two subcomponents and they can stack on top of each other and sum to 1.14. I'll show you how that's done. So we'll jump into the data again. So instead of 1.14, I'll have uh, 0 0.64 and below it 0 0.50. And you can see on the right hand side that ThinkSell has automatically stacked the two numbers. Now this is great if you want to break down, for example, sales income into maybe domestic income and international income. That could be one use. But you can also have 
uh, a negative number in here. So for example, if our international income was actually negative 0.5, which means that our income dropped last year, we can add that in. And there's an important thing to see here. Because we've formatted the negatives, we'll have a negative symbol there, perfect. You'll also see that this connector doesn't connect to the top corner. It actually connects to the point at which uh, they sum out. So for example, this connector will connect at 0 0.14, not 0 0.64. And as always, ThinkSell has automatically calculated the FY20 cash earnings number to be the running total of all of these numbers because we use E in this column. One additional tip I'll quickly mention here at the end is that we can add a reference column into a waterfall chart very easily. So to add a reference column, let's go back into the data by double clicking on the chart and I'll add one more column in and I'll call this FY20 competitor cash earnings and we'll call this number 7.34. Now you can see here that this is automatically added an additional 7.34 and because there's no E at the end, there's no total column. But to turn this into a reference column, we simply need to select the connector and hit delete. That's it for the basics of waterfall charts. Like other charts, we can add uh, chart decorations like difference arrows and Kagar arrows. So let's quickly do that. Hold control, click on FY19 cash earnings, FY20 cash earnings, right click and we'll do a uh, total difference arrow so click that like always we can change the format by left clicking on the label and we can add a extra decimal place perfect so that's it that's how you add a waterfall chart in thingcell if you have any questions or comments please drop them down in the comment box below hope that was useful